Lincoln McGill here again. Have some exciting news about our trip to the Philippines. Before I get to the gold and the $100,000 bills, I have, have to give you a little bit of background. Flew into the Philippines following some clues from my grandfather. Uh, upon our visit there, we immediately met a gentleman named Chris Bayani, a local guy that said he knew my grandfather. He showed us around some interesting places, including the Golden Mosque there in Manila, and in some uh, private rooms of the mosque, he showed his personal collection of Lemurian artifacts, including a rock with the encircled Tau symbol on it, so Keith and I were pretty excited to see that. Chris was also nice enough to fly us over the uh, rice terraces, the famous rice terraces, and Chris confirmed what we heard in Namadol, that Namadol was in fact a weather controlling site, and the whole reason why they were controlling the weather was to make sure that the rice terraces got the water necessary to grow uh, a ton of rice, uh, feed hundreds of thousands if not millions of people, but also to prevent hurricanes from coming in there and destroying the crops. So that was quite interesting. He also did show us the gold bars and my grandfather had a picture of, he said that that was brought to the Philippines, I think it was after World War I or pre-World War II, in an effort to essentially buy intelligence of that Pacific area, which came uh, to be extremely useful during World War II. He said that the $100,000 bills came a little bit later, and that printing press was just their way of transferring large amounts of money without having to ship these cumbersome gold bars. That was interesting, too. As soon as we returned from the cave that had the gold bars in it, we got off the subway and a gentleman followed us and ended up actually chasing us through the streets, which luckily we avoided, but uh, uh, me and Keith think it was that same park ranger that was chasing us up in Mount Shasta, so we're trying to figure out who that guy is, obviously try to avoid him in the future. And then the last thing is, after we got back and we were looking at the pictures again, that picture of my grandfather and his two other friends that were in that cave next to the gold in the printing press, Keith noticed that each of them were making a subtle sign language symbol with their hands that said O-W-O. So we're trying to figure out if that's um, a, a city we came up with Owo uh, in Nigeria, I guess. Anyway, we're trying to figure out what O-W-O is. So as soon as we figure that out, I'll keep you posted. Thanks.